Welcome to the Weka Technical Demonstration Series. Today, we're going to be talking about Weka's Snap to Object, Replication, and Data Protection Technology. In this video, we'll cover the architecture about how Snap to Object works. Then, we'll dive into a demonstration showing snapshotting, replication to an object store, and restoration of data from that same object store back to a file system. Weka's Snap to Object technology is fundamentally based on our fully distributed snapshot technology. These are highly granular, instantaneous snapshots that have no impact on performance at all. These snapshots can be either read-only or they can be clonable or a writable snapshot. In addition to this, Weka supports over 4,000 snapshots per system. For Snap to Object, we start with the very basics. We first take a snapshot of the Weka system. Once the snapshot is taken, that image of all of the data can be sent off to an object store. In this case, we show a public cloud, but it can also be on-premises or private. That data can then be attached to another Weka cluster and used. The data being used can not only be done locally, but we can also do things such as clone the data by taking another snapshot and sending it back to the original location. This allows you to do things such as cloud bursting and then incremental return of results back to your on-prem system. Inside of the Weka GUI, if you go ahead and click on the object store link in the left-hand menu, you'll see that we've already pre-attached an S3 bucket. This bucket resides inside of AWS as part of their S3 service. Click on File Systems and we see that the default file system has had that S3 bucket attached to it, so now it is part of that particular file system's namespace. Now we'll go to one of the clients that's attached to the Weka cluster. First, we're going to go ahead and do a mount command to show that the default file system is mounted on slash mnt slash Weka, both as a POSIX file system as well as slash mnt slash weka-nfs as an NFS file system. Looking at the DF for these particular file systems, we see that they're presenting 10 terabytes of space. We'll now do an ls on the slash mnt directory. And we see there's three locations. There's the weka mount, the weka NFS mount, and an empty directory that I've pre-created called Weka2, which will come into play a little bit later. We'll cd into the slash mount slash Weka directory and do an ls. We see that there is a file one that exists. I'm gonna go ahead and do an md5 hash checksum on file one to validate the fingerprint of that file and its unique identity. This number, which, showing, which is shown here, will be important a little bit later. I'll go ahead and do an ls on the Weka2 directory from earlier. As you can see, the directory is empty. This will become the mount point for when we recover our data later on. In the Weka GUI, we're going to go ahead and take a snapshot of the default file system. This is the file system that contained file one. To create the snapshot, just give it a name, give it an access point, and then click Create. Now that our instantaneous snapshot has been created, we begin the process of uploading it to the object store. Click on the snapshot, click Upload to Local Object Store, and click Upload. It's that simple. The GUI will show you the synchronization status in the upper right of the green box. Also in the green box, you'll see the object store locator. This is the unique identifier of the location within the object store that the snapshot has been uploaded to. We're gonna copy that for right now because we'll need that to recover that snapshot to a new location later. Switching to the file systems menu, we'll go ahead and add a new file system onto the Weka platform. We give it a name, and if we turn tiering on, you'll see that several new options appear. 
So first off, we'll give it the drive capacity of the file system itself. In this case, we'll be relatively small, three terabytes in size. Now we're going to go ahead and fill the data back in from the uploaded snapshot. We'll copy back in the object store locator and then just click create. Because I have tiering turned on, not only do I have to give the drive capacity, but I also have to give the total capacity of the file system. Because the two are the same, all data will be held on the NVMe drive tier. We quickly verify that the parameters we put in for the file system exist. The file system is called Weka2, and there is an attached object store in it. Inside the client CLI, we'll go ahead and we'll mount the Weka2 file system. This will be a POSIX mount. The mount is successful, so we'll go ahead and do a DF command to verify that the mount exists. The mount is now verified, and we have three terabytes of capacity being presented to the Weka2 mount. We'll now CD into the Weka2 directory and do an LS to verify that our file one exists. And finally, we'll do an MD5 checksum again to validate that it's the exact same file that's being presented both on Weka2, which is the restored file system, as well as Weka, which is the original mounted file system. As you can see, Weka Snap to Object is a powerful tool that can enable use cases from data protection and ransomware mitigation, all the way to cloning and cloud bursting, all while simplifying your data management.